Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Vicious and welcome to the first update video on the Bass Shaker project, aka Audio Transducer. This video is uh, the first step that anyone has to take when they're taking on a project, and that is sourcing out the stuff for your project, going and ma making your purchases. So um, we have two main components that are needed for this project, and that's going to be the actual transducer and then the amplifier to power that. As I looked around for a couple of days, I found the best store for that was going to be Parts Express. They had a much higher variety than anyone else as far as options to purchase from. And their prices were actually better, better than other places that I normally would expect to be cheaper. So this ended up being where I sourced everything out. It took me about two days of pretty hard research to figure out what I wanted to get for my project. And I'm going to go over what I purchased and why. But I'm going to show you the other top products I was looking at and then kind of explain why those were also options for me and why they might be better for your project because your project necessarily won't duplicate and be just like mine if you're doing this uh, after following this video. So my goal here is uh, I'm making my computer chair into going to be it's going to have tactical feedback. So I'm not using a large piece of furniture or anything like that. And I'm also working on a very low budget because this was funded by mostly donations. I got a $70 so far in total from donations. Uh, <clears throat> so let me show you guys the first component that we need, which is going to be the audio transducers. There's three main ones I looked at. We have the Dayton Audio Puck. This is the smallest and cheapest and most low powered of all the three that I looked at. As you can see, it's, it's very tiny. It has a very low price of only $13, and it has very low power requirements, only 15 watts RMS and 30 watts max. The neat thing about this puck, I thought, was obviously it's very budget uh, friendly, and because it's so uh, cheap and so small, it's easy to install into smaller, tighter areas, and you can get multiples of them. So if you're using a piece of furniture like a couch, for instance, you might not want one very powerful transducer in the center of the couch. Maybe you'd prefer to spread out four of these smaller ones, to kind of spread out that load a little bit. And this makes it easy to do that. The next step up was the Aura Based Shaker Pro here. This one is about $40, and it also has pretty decent power requirements, 50 watts RMS, 100 watts max. And then the last one is the Clark Synthesis GST-209. Now this one goes up to about $85, and the power requirements are a little bit more hefty at 100 watts RMS, 350 max. Now, let me explain the major differences between these. First of all, the puck I told you, small, low power requirements. There's one really important thing to notice is I saw there's two different versions. The 16 here represents the uh, resistance or the, or the impedance of what you're gonna be hooking this up to your amplifier. This is 16 ohms, this is eight ohms. If you know anything about speaker wiring, you know that you can wire them in series or parallel to change the, the load on your amplifier and your amplifier is gonna be rated to give so much wattage at a certain uh, impedance. Most amps run about eight ohms or four ohms. Sometimes they go down to two or one for very expensive, usually car subwoofer for amplifiers. You have to match that. If you go down below what your amplifier is rated for, it can cause a lot of distortion or fry it out. And if you're much higher than what your amp is rated for, that means you're not gonna get the full power that it's actually rated for. So this is at eight and this is 16. This is at four and this is also at four. The next thing to keep in mind is that the puck and the aura are both um, just made to kick on at low frequencies. They're made for LFE, low frequency effects. When the sound gets to a certain point, they kick on and they rumble real hard and they give you a tactile feedback. The, you'll, you'll find in the stats somewhere along the range uh, that they give you, like right here, you go 20 to 80 hertz. That's all bass. That's nothing high pitched. Same thing in here. Somewhere you're going to find it. You go 20 to 80 hertz, exactly the same. The Clark synthesis is different. It does not just kick on at a low frequency. It's actually always on, and it has a very a large range from 35 to 17,000 hertz. This means it has different um, situations that it might be more useful to you. If you're doing music and things like that, I think this might respond better to that kind of setup. First is someone going for uh, gaming or, or uh, home movie theater and stuff like that, where you only want it to complement your subwoofer and pick you up the, uh, the bass. So based on those three, because we're on a budget and because I only wanted low frequency effects, the Aura was the best bet for me. And that's what we went with. And it seems to be a really good, uh, well-known pick 
takes, according to what I read, about four of these to equal one of these. And according to stats, I don't believe what I read off of the manufacturer stats, but it says here, somewhere in the, yeah, right here, this is up to 10 times the force of the aura. I don't necessarily believe that's true unless it's like absolutely ideal conditions. Um, so I would go with this for my, my needs. Now that we have that picked out, it's time to find an amplifier that's going to work really well for this. And I picked out three amplifiers I looked at the most closely. We have the La Pai 2.1. This is a Chinese branded amplifier. And it says here that it is a 2.1 channel amp, that it has a, let's find the stats here, a 40 watt max on two channels, then it has a subwoofer output of 68 watts max. And we knew that based on what we read about this, this is 50 watts RMS, and therefore it would be powered quite handily by 68 watts. Um, but as I went deeper and deeper into research, here's some of the things that I discovered about this amp. First of all, I mean, it's really budget friendly, $27. It's Chinese branded. We know that sometimes there's like a little bit of hate towards Chinese products, and there are some really good ones and some really bad ones, and you usually get what you pay for. The reason why this is not a perfect fit for me is because if you notice, it's saying that it's 68 watts max here. This is not the RMS. Also, somewhere in the documentation further down from some of the reviews, people are talking about how that the 68 watts is at a very high distortion. And uh, that is not okay because amps should be rated no more than like one or 2% distortion for their, their actual rating because you wouldn't really normally use it past that. So, I actually found there's about three or four people that I know that have used this amp with the Aura, and it works. But because I'm going to be going for a one-time buy, and I want to make sure that what I have is perfect, I would rather have more amp than I need and back it down than to be overstressing an amp and losing some quality or find that I need to upgrade later on. So then I started looking at more powerful amps, and I moved up into the Dayton Audio subwoofer amplifiers. These are designed to power subwoofers, and these tactical transducers basically are silent subwoofers. So it's a perfect fit. They're normally rated to run at a nice low um, <laughs> impedance. 70 watts here RMS, not max, at 4 ohms. At 2% uh, total, total harmonic distortion, that's perfect. Here's the other really big key thing about subwoofer amplifiers. Almost all of them always have one of these built in, which is a low pass crossover. Using this crossover, I can cut off any frequencies above a certain range to make sure that the, the tactical transducer only picks up the low frequency effects that I want it to. That's very, very important because you don't want these things trying to play the high notes. It just won't sound right or it might not function right. The subwoofer amp is a good fit. This is a plate amplifier. It's made to go inside of an enclosure like you're building your own subwoofer. But fortunately, it is fully enclosed so it can be used standalone like I would be using it. I did go look at one step up higher than that, and this is out of our budget, but I want to tell you about it because someone else who's maybe building a slightly bigger, more expensive setup than me might like this amplifier. $160. This one is 75 watts into two channels. And the reason I think that's really great is because if you decide to get one for now, but you want to add a second one later on, then you know you have it available to you. You don't have to purchase a new amp. This one has very, very high uh, quality parts and stats, great uh, warranty and everything. I know the crossover on this one works really well and, and it's just all self-contained, very beautiful unit. So I think this would be, this would be the dream amp that I would get for the setup if I was going to spend more versus having kind of a DIY look with this plate amplifier sitting out. <laughs> but we're going to go with what works for this setup. So that's what we're going to go with. Now, let's see, let's talk about crossovers a little bit more. I'm going to be running this setup from the subwoofer output on my receiver. My home theater receiver has the subwoofer out, which is going to my current subwoofer. And I'm going to use a splitter and also send that feed into the amplifier for the, the audio transducer. That means I'm already cutting off a lot of the high frequencies, but obviously you still need to narrow it down more. From what I read about this amplifier, I guess based on the price point, that it doesn't have a real true crossover and that, that I might need to further filter this. And let's see if I can, I'm gonna search for you guys real quick. It's FMOD, yeah, FMOD. This is gonna be the cheapest crossover you can get if you need to get one 
without spending the money for an active crossover. These FMOD are just inline RCAs and they have one at 70 hertz low pass and also there's another at 50 hertz low pass. You can just put this in line with your signal to your amplifier and it'll act as a crossover to cut off all those higher frequencies. So I'd recommend this is an option for you if you need to cut off your higher frequencies. If you're going to be say wiring this up directly from your video game console or something similar like your DVD player or Blu-ray player, you need to cut those frequencies off. And if your amplifier does not have a good uh, built-in crossover, then this would be the solution for you for doing it cheaply. You can always buy an actual real crossover if you need it. So I would probably go with 70 hertz, but most people, especially home theater, would uh, go with maybe 50 hertz. Now let's talk about the money part. If you get one of these with the current pricing and you get this amplifier, which is what I chose to go with, the total came out to $98.60. I got lucky that Parts Express happens to have free shipping for orders over $98. So that means we got like $14 worth of free shipping. Had I tried to go extreme budget and gotten say some of the, uh, like two of the pucks and the lapai, I would have had to pay for the shipping. So I kind of lucked out with that. That was kind of a good purchasing decision. When you're going for things online, remember, look at your shipping cost. You might buy a $10 item and pay $12 for shipping and handling, and that's no good. Speaking of before, I told you this would be, it works with the uh, the Aura, but you know it might not be ideal. I think this would be a perfect fit for someone who wants to start off small and get just two of the pucks. If you get two of the eight ohm pucks and wire them in parallel, that'd give you a four ohm load, and you'd only need about 30 watts RMS between the two, and this right here, even though it's overrated to run at 68 watts max, would definitely run about 30 to 45 watts very comfortably. You'd have yourself a very nice setup to start off with to try this out. So I like this thing here because it, it looks really nice. It's all self-contained. It can be mounted down if you need it to be. And it also has an auxiliary input in the front. If you guys remember me talking about another project I might want to try on the side, the uh, alarm clock for the hard of hearing or deaf, using the same technology, this is like the one-stop shop. Instead of hacking apart an alarm clock and hacking it all together and being really um, technical with it, the simplest and easiest way to complete that project that I came up with the other day would simply to be buy an old cell phone. It doesn't even have to have service on it. Download a ringtone of a particular bass frequency that would be good for waking you up, plugging in that phone's headphone output into this amplifier here, and then wiring up those transducers to your bed and you'd have an alarm clock that wakes you up by motion and vibration instead of by sound. So that was a pretty easy project to complete now that I think about it. It didn't require all the hackery I thought it would. But uh, yeah, this is just rattling off the top of my head what's coming in. I've already ordered these parts. They probably won't be here for another week. I tried to hit some of the main points that I looked at, which was cost, uh, what's going to fit my project as far as size and power, when it comes to the amplifiers, I was looking at the crossovers, I was looking at the wattage rating, I was looking at the cost, and making sure that it's going to um, you know, work well for my setup as far as mounting and size. The transducers, again, you know, look at the size of them, look at the rating for the impedance, make sure that it works with your amplifier. So those are the main things that I wanted to talk about with this project. If you want to look up more information on Google about uh, speakers and how to wire them up in series or parallel, and also how amplifiers are rated. That might help you out with your decisions. And also once you have narrowed down what you want to get for your project, do what I did and take the time to read all the user reviews because I found a lot of really great information in, in all of these user reviews. So that's gonna be this video guys as an update. Let's see, in closing, I will go ahead and throw the donation link into the video like I did last video because someone asked me about it and they threw me $10 that was going towards this project. And then once I get this project completed, any further donations go to the next project. Also, I want to tell you guys that thank you for being a viewer and subscribing to the channel if you want to see this project and all the other future reviews and other videos I do. And that the best way to say thanks to all my videos is to give them a thumbs up to say thanks. So, hope you guys found this video useful and entertaining. This was Vicious, and I'll see you guys next time.